Good evening. And Anne is, I think Anne has a funeral, right? Death, a couple of deaths in her family, so I would ask you to keep her husband in your prayers. Also, we, I would just hand in a note before worship, we found out uh, Mary Schilling is in the hospital for tests, so I would ask you to keep her in your thoughts and prayers as well. Now, on the, the happier side of things, do we have people visiting this evening? <coughs> Well, okay, there's one over here who's trying desperately hard to hide. All right, hang on, we're going to, uh, no, 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 there's a, there's, a, there's a whole ritual that goes with this. We are Lutheran after all. Okay, here we go. Thank you very much. I'm Susanna Fleming. I'm Jody Shunin's daughter, and I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. And we are very glad you are here. How long will you be visiting? Till Monday. Monday, all right. Go back very to work. All right, and then trying desperately to hide on the other side. Nick and Julia Meyer, we're from the eastern end of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, and we are wandering the area aimlessly. Uh, A wandering Aramean was and we're leaving tomorrow. Okay. All right, B. All you Michigan people, gather around and be nice to them. They're considering moving down this way, so... You know how that works. Okay, you've done well this week for the, uh, the more mature set has done well with hospitalizations. However, young Carl Kniebel went into the hospital uh, with some mystery uh, platelets went down. Now platelets have gone back up and young Carl is back home. So <clears throat> now once we get uh, Mary Schilling out of the hospital, we'll be in good shape. I will find out what's up with that and let y'all know tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, annual business meeting, and I know everyone will come back. (laughs) What are you laughing at? I heard that. Annual business meeting, Sunday, February 19th, immediately will feed you. Oh, well. Following the congregational meeting on February 19th, 2023, there will be a potluck. Sign-up sheets are on the bulletin board. Please sign up to set up, clean up, and eat up, I guess. Look forward to seeing you there. Now, before we get to our special guest for the evening, any announcements from the body for the sake of good order? Okie dokie. Where is Ms. Vance? There is Ms. Vance. Ready with a temple talk you are? All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. For, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Linda Vance. I'm a Stephen minister, part of the Stephen minister leader team. And as an aside, I also represent you on the council as chair of the stewardship team. So I could just have a myriad of little name tags bouncing down my shirt, but I usually choose one and stick with it. Hopefully, as you came in tonight or earlier, the last couple of weeks, you noticed the Stephen Minister stained glass panel to the, as you come in, to the right of the front door. And um, hopefully you have seen it. Uh, That's courtesy, the design is courtesy of our very own Bev Olin. Um, So anyway, it's just a tribute to the many people who have worked in the Stephen Ministry program. And we have many who have been a Stephen Minister and kind of decided to retire from being one. And we even have some people who have been and are now a care receiver as opposed to a caregiver. So what goes around comes around. Um, One of the definitions of being a Stephen Minister is that it's a trained individual to offer care to people who are hurting. It kind of sounds a bit familiar to me as we look at our church mission statement of being a caring community, baptized, saved, empowered, and sent. And that's kind of what a Stephen minister is too. As a Stephen minister, you will be trained 
50 hours to be exact. Yes, it sounds like a long time to dedicate to this, but we cover so many things in our training that it would be hard pressed to find a situation you would be put in that you haven't had some kind of exposure to during the training. Um, and we are looking for men and women who are interested in becoming a Stephen minister. We're going to have a class after Easter. Um, we will be joined by several area churches in our training, which makes it better for us as trainees because we get the thoughts of multiple churches, congregations, and people. So it, um, when I went through my training, there were four of us, two from here and two from St. Francis. Last time we had four churches represented and the conversations are so much better with so many more people in them. So um, it gives us different instructors, videos, role playing, laughter, beginning, ending, and interspersed with prayer. Following the training sessions, you'll be eligible to be a caregiver. Care receivers are vetted and carefully paired to caregivers to provide the best possible outcome. And in my tenure, I think there's only been once that we had to change a caregiver because it just was not a compatible combination. Everything, all activities, every discussion is confidential between the caregiver and the care receiver. And then the caregivers report back to monthly to the um, team leaders, and we all discuss what's going on with them. Um, never using names, locations, specifics, just what can we do to help you in your ministry to others. Let me share what the website says about Stephen Ministry. Congregations carry out Christ's commandment to love one another as I have loved you in a powerful and practical way. Pastors have a team of gifted, trained, and committed lay caregivers ready to minister to hurting people. And as Pastor Gross has said, he is so amazing, this is me saying, he is so amazing in meeting our members at hospitals and specific crisis situations. It amazes me sometimes how many people he's seen in a given day and especially in a given week. But he can't do all the follow-up and that's where we come in. We can take it from when you leave the hospital or when you have a death or when you have something significant happening to you and carry on for however long it takes for, for the individual and for us to feel comfortable. Um, Lay people nurture and use their gifts in meaningful ministry, growing spiritually as they serve others. And boy, that certainly is talking to me. People who are hurting have a caring Christian presence to provide emotional and spiritual support. In short, Stephen Ministry helps carry out the mission of this church by being a part of a caring community, saved, empowered, and sent to share God's love. You'll hear more about Stephen Ministry as this service continues. And if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me after this service or any of the Stephen leaders. Um, there's going to be an article in the next Lifelines with all of our names and everything. Thanks, and prayerfully consider this. It's a great ministry. there is nothing else from the body, I would invite you to stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, as community gathered here, we confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. 
For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus your beloved Son, <clears throat> you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory. Bring us to enjoy his fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone 
with the law and the commandments, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and her are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsibly Psalm 2. Why are the nations in an uproar? Why do the peoples mutter empty threats? Why do the kings of the earth rise up in revolt and the princes plot together against the Lord and against the Lord's anointed? Let us break their yoke, they say. Let us cast off their bonds from us. Then in wrath, God speaks to them, and in rage, fills them with terror. As for me, I have anointed my king upon the line of my holy mountain. Let me announce the decree of the Lord, who said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You shall crush them with an iron rod and shatter them like a piece of pottery. And now, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Submit to the Lord with fear and with trembling bow in worship. Lest the Lord be angry and you and perish in a sudden blaze of wrath. Happy are all who take refuge in God. A reading from Second Peter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew, the 17th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John. 
led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, get up. Do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Dictionary defines transfigure to transform into something more beautiful or elevated. Sundays and Seasons introduces the pericopes this way. Today's festival is a bridge between the Advent Christmas epiphany cycle that comes to a close today and the Lent Easter cycle that begins in several days. On a high mountain, Jesus is revealed as God's beloved son, echoing the words from his baptism. This vision of glory sustains us as Jesus face, faces impending death in Jerusalem. We turn, physically turn, this week to Ash Wednesday, in our yearly baptismal journey from Lent to Easter. Some churches, ours included, will put aside the Alleluia at the conclusion of the liturgy. The word of joy will be omitted during the season of Lent and will not be sung again until the day of resurrection. All this definition business is here for a reason. Because over the years, I think a lot of people have come to misunderstand transfiguration. It's not about how we become shiny white. It's about a clear image of the nature of Christ. It is about an elevated and a more beautiful vision of Jesus. Not Jesus as you see Jesus in paintings with that little salad plate kind of floating over his head. But Jesus who has turned his face toward Jerusalem. Which is a nice way of saying Jesus who looks squarely at his own impending death. Jesus, who is transfigured through service, service for all humanity, service which carries him from the cross, through the empty tomb, to the power of the resurrection. But here's a news flash for you. We don't get to the beauty of Easter lilies without passing through the reality of Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. The beautiful and elevated vision of Jesus is made perfect in weakness, humility, acceptance, and accompaniment. The beautiful and elevated vision of Jesus found in the midst of pain and grief and loss. As Jesus turns his face toward Jerusalem and all that that entails, we see a more radiant vision and words begin to fail. And we are left with the purely experiential element of this festival. Transfiguration is not simply something that we see. It is something that we live. And that is the model for Stephen ministry. 
Stephen ministry draws its name from the book of Acts, chapter 6. Stephen is chosen to provide caring ministry to those in need. Caring ministry has been a feature of the Christian faith throughout history. This is not something new agey that we came up with. And that caring ministry is at the heart of what Stephen ministers do. It's not simply that the 12 were lazy and said, hey, why don't we get somebody else to do our work for us? The 12 see an opportunity to expand ministry. They ordained deacons to oversee the care of the community. In doing so, deacons extend the ministry already in place, the care of the apostles, the first bishops of the church. And Stephen ministry continues that expansion today. Stephen ministry serves to bring Christ's healing love to those who are hurting, to walk with people who are passing through the valley. They're not going to live there. They're not going to stay there, right? But they are passing through a season of life, dealing with grief and loss, to be a caring and compassionate partner, to model the presence of Christ in the midst of profound difficulty. At no point can we remove that difficulty. We can't remove it any more than Christ could skip the cross. But in that journey of companionship, we find grief transfigured. We are transfigured. And a more elevated vision of Jesus becomes clear. Note I didn't say a more elevated vision of the Stephen minister. A more elevated vision of the one whom the Stephen minister brings into the setting. Jesus instructed his disciples to love one another as I have loved you. John 13, 34. Stephen ministry as a caregiving ministry equips people to offer love through their presence. A caring presence. A listening, encouraging, and praying presence with those who receive this ministry. It's one of the spiritual works of mercy comforting the sorrowful describes Stephen ministry's work well. The United Conference of Bishops describes the work as a listening ear for those going through a tough time. It's spiritual care, not cure, right? We can't take away the pain, but we can say in the midst of that pain, there is hope. There's presence. We experience challenges in life, times when we could benefit from care and support. I know I have. Stephen ministers provide the emotional and spiritual care we need when faced with situations which can be overwhelming. The loss of a spouse, the loss of a child, the loss of a job, the loss of almost anything changes the dynamic of life places us into a spiritual crisis where Stephen ministry can excel. Those Stephen ministers, as you heard, are not professional counselors. They aren't set out unarmed, right? They are equipped through specialized training to be Christ's hands and feet. Given the reality of our congregation here, I cannot provide the kind of support that grieving people require. Right? I'm, I'm sort of the first in the triage line, right? I go from hospital room to hospital room because there is another one coming. Stephen Ministry follows behind and said, we will help, we will support, we will be Christ's hands and feet. Often overlooked is Peter's statement. Lord, it's good for us to be here. Usually we make fun of Pete. Say, well, he just didn't know what to say, so he's just sort of talking. Oh! But it is good for us to be here. We may not be about building booths, 
but we are about building community, to participate in transfiguration through service, through accompaniment, through grief, to what lies on the other side. Does not mean that grief is good, but in the midst of pain, it is good for us to be present, to bring Christ into that situation. It's good to walk with a brother or sister in Christ. It's good for the grieving person to know, to see, to experience. They're not alone. We do not walk alone, and we will not be alone. Because this community is present to surround and support. The community is present in the form of Stephen Ministry to accompany people as they journey through the valley. Lord, it is good for us to be here. To be in community. To experience the transfiguration enfleshed among God's people in a powerful way. So as we get ready for Ash Wednesday this coming week, as you get ready to feel ashes once again on your forehead, consider how Stephen Ministry can enhance this faith community, both through the giving and the receiving of care as we all journey life's path. Lord, it is good. For us to be here. And it is especially good that we do not travel this road alone. Amen. Amen. church, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Embolden your church as it witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Equip lay preachers, deacons, and pastors. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. D dwell with your whole creation from the tallest mountain peak to the deepest valley. Bless the work of conservation organizations and protect vital habitats. Support the work of disaster relief agencies around the world, such as Lutheran Disaster Relief. Speed their aid as they seek to bring help to Syria and Turkey. Merciful God, Bring freedom and justice to all nations. We continue to lift up and pray for the people of Ukraine, Afghanistan. Merciful God, give shelter to those lacking safe homes, spur communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany with your touch those who are homebound, sick, isolated. We lift up former President Jimmy Carter and his family as he enters into hospice care. Be with those known to this congregation, especially Betty A., Betty a. Grayson, B. Grayson B., Don B., Don B. Sherry B., Terry Lou C, David F, Judy H, Bill H, Lowell K, Paul K, Pastor Joe, Bev S, Vicki S, Grace and Walt T, Kathy and Larry W. Merciful God, make us eager to receive your word and scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice and the needs of our neighbors. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, we pray for this nation. Our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders, merciful God, receive our, prayer. receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. With our forebears in faith and all who have hoped in you, teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God. Our Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently before God's throne of grace now those concerns, cares, and celebrations which you carry in your lives today. We bring to you our needs and hopes we bring our prayers, those offered silently, those uttered aloud, and those prayers for which we have no words. All these 
we bring, trusting your wisdom, power, revealed in Christ, crucified and raised. Amen. I invite you, as you are able, please to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with one another. Please stand. of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this 
for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. you that the words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you.
Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this meal. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Follow the way of Jesus.